Salutations, dreamers in dreamland. Welcome to the latest edition of Listen to Me. Listen to Me, volume 58. And let me tell you something right now, dreamers in dreamland. Everybody's favorite boxing shaman, yours truly, the dream. I am as shocked and confused as anyone else as to how a Sunday is a fight day. Not only a fight day, but a pay-per-view fight day? Very bizarre, but you know, today is Sunday, the 5th of December, 2021, and Gervonta Davis, Gervonta Davis, Tank Davis, he's fighting on Showtime pay-per-view tonight, and he's fighting against Isaac Cruz. Isaac Cruz, who, look, I'm a boxing junkie, and I'm fairly unfamiliar with Isaac Cruz. I've seen some footage of him since he was named as the late replacement to Rolando Romero, who was originally supposed to fight Tank Davis tonight, but because of some kind of allegations of sexual misconduct against Roly Romero, he has been pulled from the fight. And the PBC have inserted, uh, Showtime pay-per-view have inserted Isaac Cruz. Isaac Cruz, who maybe is a top 10 guy, if you're editing your list with a sharp enough pencil and you can pencil him in there at the last minute, I mean, something's rotten in Denmark. Sunday night pay-per-views, Tank Davis, $80. And look, Dreamers in Dreamland, everybody's favorite boxing shaman, yours truly the dream. Yes, I said that I was not going to order this pay-per-view. Unfortunately, the NFL sucks. Football in America is boring. I don't want to watch it. I'm going to be watching boxing. I'm a boxing junkie. Having said that, the pay-per-view is not worth the money. I am picking Tank Davis to knock out Isaac Cruz before the end of the third quarter of the fight. In a 12-round fight, my pick is Tank Davis, round number nine, knockout. Knockout cold. Tank Davis is going to stop Isaac Cruz. It's not going to happen in the first quarter, and it's not going to happen in the championship rounds. The third quarter of the fight, when the water starts to get a little bit deeper and a little bit harder to navigate through, Javante Davis is going to... He's going to land the right hand <clears throat> that's just going to knock out Isaac Cruz. That's the way I see it going, and that's all the time I'm going to spend on that. And that's all I have to say about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, yours truly, everybody's favorite boxing show in the dream. My pick for this evening, Tank Davis, knockout round number nine. Next, I want to recap the business that has already taken place this weekend. Look, the fight started on Thursday. We had some boxing on Friday. We had some boxing yesterday. Thursday night. On Trilla, I ended up watching it. It didn't cost me a dime. But on Trilla, Thursday night, Michael Hunter, he looked like shit. He looked like trash. Michael Hunter fought Jerry Forrest to a draw. And let me tell you something right now. Jerry Forrest beat the shit out of Michael Hunter. Jerry Forrest beat the shit out of Michael Hunter. Jerry Forrest beat up Michael Hunter on Thursday night. And he was robbed. They gave him a draw. He was robbed. Jerry Forrest damn near stopped Michael Hunter in the final round of that fight. I believe it was a 10-round fight. And in the 10th and final round, Michael Hunter was out on his feet. Michael Hunter was throwing up in the corner between rounds, number 6 and 7. Or rounds number 5 and 6, I believe. Go back, look at the footage. Michael Hunter was throwing up in the corner. Michael Hunter was in bad shape. Michael Hunter's entire project with Triller has been a disaster. It's been fucking terrible. And Jerry Forrest, Jerry Forrest beat the shit out of Michael Hunter, and he was given a draw. And Jerry Forrest, previous to that, when he fought Zhang Zhili, Zhili Zhang, however you want to say it, in China, you know, they say the last name first. So whether you call him Zhang Zhili or Zhili Zhang, the damn near 40-year-old Chinese heavyweight prospect, the Big Bang, he had fought Jerry Forrest to a draw in Jerry Forrest's previous fight to fighting Michael Hunter. And let me tell you something. Jerry Forrest beat the shit out of Zhili Zhang. Out of Zhang Zhili. However you want to say this guy's name, Jerry Forrest beat the shit out of him and was given a draw in that fight too. He was robbed of another win. Now this brings up, this brings up a very interesting point that I would like to bring to the table right now. Now look, it goes to the old adage, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. With Jerry Forrest, when he fought a draw with Zhili Zhang, who is ranked number nine by the WBO, 
ranked number 12 by the W, excuse me, by the IBF. Zhang Zhili, number 12 by the IBF and number 9 by the WBO. At the time, when Zhili Zhang fought Jerry Forrest, when they had their draw, Zhang Zhili was ranked in the top 10 by the WBA at that time, I believe. Now, since then, his name has disappeared from the WBA rankings, but he's number 9 by the WBO and number 12 by the IBF. He's not ranked in the top 10 by the Ring Magazine. However, Michael Hunter by the Ring Magazine is ranked number 8. Michael Hunter by the WBO is ranked number 7. And Michael Hunter by the WBC is ranked number 7. Michael Hunter by the WBA is ranked number 2. The number 2 ranked WA, WBA contender is Michael Hunter. Now, either Julie Zhang and Michael Hunter, they're not that good. And these rankings are total fucking bullshit and garbage. And, and listen, we, we, we all know that these alphabet rankings are manipulated. If a guy doesn't pay sanctioning fees to the WBC, he could be ranked by number one by the WBO, the WBA, and the IBF. But if he's not paying the sanctioning fees for the WBC, they have no obligation to rank him. And more often than not, that fighter is not ranked. So these, you know, rankings by these alphabet bodies, yes, they can be manipulated. But the Ring Magazine rankings, they're usually a little bit better than the alphabet bodies. And they have Michael Hunter ranked in at number eight. And in Jerry Forrest's last two fights, when he beat the shit out of those guys and deserved a win, he didn't get a loss. He got a draw in the record books. So either those two guys, Michael Hunter and Jilly Zhang, they fucking suck and they're not that good. Or Jerry Forrest is that good. And Jerry Forrest, maybe, maybe at this point in his career, he is a fringe top 10, top 15 heavyweight. Look, his last three fights, he, he lost a unanimous decision to Carlos Takam. Okay, Carlos Takam, who has been a top 15 heavyweight. Previous to that, a top 10 heavyweight. Carlos Takam is nobody to fuck with. Carlos Takam, when he was fighting Joe Joyce, a lot, of people tell, uh, excuse me, a lot of people will tell you that we're watching that fight, that Carlos Takam was winning that fight before the referee jumped in and stopped it and gave Joe Joyce the win. Look, after his, you know, universal, excuse me, after his universal decision loss to Carlos Takam, Jerry Forrest went on to have a draw with Zhili Zhang, Zhang Zhili, the damn near 40-year-old Chinese prospect, bizarre, and then he had a draw with Michael Hunter, consensus top 10 heavyweight Michael Hunter. So is Jerry Forrest that good? What would happen? Here's a proposed situation. What would happen if Jerry Forrest fought Trevor Bryan? I'm not stupid. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Jerry Forrest is going to beat Alexander Usyk, or he's going to beat Anthony Joshua, or he's going to beat Dillian White, or he's going to beat Deontay Wilder, or he's going to beat Tyson Fury. I'm not pretending. I'm not playing pretend. But I'm proposing the question, what would happen if Jerry Forrest got in the ring with Trevor Bryan, the WBA regular champion? What would happen if Jerry Forrest got in the ring with Manuel Char, the other WBA regular champion. What would happen? What would happen if Jerry Forrest got in the ring with, let's say, Derek Chisora? What would happen if Jerry Forrest got in the ring with Joe Parker? I would like to know the answer to those questions. And look, we have a fight coming up in the next few weeks in December with Joseph Parker and Derek Chisora. They will be fighting one another. And listen, last time they fought each other last year... I felt that Joseph Parker lost that fight. I felt that Derek Chisora beat the shit out of Joseph Parker. And I'm not the only one that felt that way. And they robbed Derek Chisora. But they're having a rematch in December and we'll see what happens. But when it comes to Jerry Forrest and Michael Hunter, I want to congratulate Jerry Forrest. I want to applaud Jerry Forrest and give him his praise. Because these, excuse me, these past two fights with Jerry Forrest, they have really been the shining moments of his career to this point. This draw with Michael Hunter where he literally beat the shit out of Michael Hunter and had Michael Hunter out on his feet, about to be stopped in the final round of that fight. Probably the shining achievement of Jerry Forrest's boxing career. And it's a shame that it doesn't go down as a win in the record books. Because if you don't watch the fight, you don't know that he won that fucking fight. I'm not stupid. 
Jerry Forrest likely does not have a fight in the future with Tyson Fury. And there's likely not a fight in the future with Jerry Forrest against Anthony Joshua or Alexander Usyk. Jerry Forrest will likely never fight for a world's heavyweight championship. But Jerry Forrest, maybe he deserves it. Michael Hunter was all the talk of the town about to fight in an IBF final eliminator before he stepped away from Philip Hergovic and that final eliminator with the IBF. He stepped away from that. He stepped into the Triller pool. And it's been a disaster. It's been a mess. Michael Hunter went from possibly fighting in an IBF eliminator and on the other side of that fight could have been a world heavyweight championship title opportunity on a major fighting platform. He left that to fight on an obscure streaming platform named Triller that even hardcore boxing fans don't give a shit about. Facts. That's the way it is. And, you know, Michael Hunter, people thought that he might deserve a heavyweight title opportunity, a world title shot. Well, Jerry Forrest beat the shit out of Michael Hunter on Thursday. And if Michael Hunter was about to possibly have a world title shot or deserved a world title opportunity, why doesn't Jerry Forrest? Look, boxing is, 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 a, is a crazy sport. You could win your fights that you're supposed to win. You could do the best you can. You could deserve to win and not win. And even when you do win, you're not guaranteed a world title opportunity. It's not like when you win in football when the AFC championship game winner and the NFC championship game winner face each other in the Super Bowl. That doesn't always happen in boxing. I've covered this before. And it's just the way it is. And Jerry Forrest, because he doesn't have a major promotion behind him, he doesn't have top rank. He doesn't have PBC. He doesn't have Matchroom USA. He doesn't have Golden Boy. He doesn't even really have a Bella Promotions backing him. He doesn't have a big promotional outfit that's, you know, backing Jerry Forrest that is, you know, taking Jerry, that's going to take Jerry Forrest to the next level. That, you know, there's no one behind him. So unfortunately, as great as Jerry Far Forrest has been fighting, he's not going to get a world title opportunity. And he's every bit as good as Michael Hunter and every bit as good as Jilly Zhang right now. Zhang Jilly. Better than those guys, in my opinion. And proven every bit as good in the record books. It's a draw. Even though he won those two fights, it's a draw. So Jerry Forrest, who's proven every bit as good as those two other guys... Zhang Zhili, he's going to get a title shot before Jerry Forrest. Michael Hunter, if he can bounce back, he would likely get a title shot before Jerry Forrest. But unfortunately for Michael Hunter, I don't see a title shot coming at any point in the near future for Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter has squandered his opportunity. Michael Hunter shit the bed. Kaka and the comma, they Michael Hunter. See, Michael Hunter shit the fucking bed. He shit the bed. He had his career... Going in the right direction. He fought on the Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz rematch undercard in Saudi Arabia. He fought a draw with Alexander Povietkin, who was a consensus top 10 heavyweight for the entire duration of his career. And he was supposed to go in to an IBF final eliminated with Philip Philippe Hergovic. He didn't do it. He wanted to hang out in the kiddie pool on Trilla and fight unheralded opponents and have a draw with Jerry Forrest. That was Michael Hunter's decision-making. So I don't really want to piss all over Michael Hunter too much. I don't want to, you know, give him a parade of urine right now. But I want to congratulate Jerry Forrest. Because Jerry Forrest did incredible against Michael Hunter. And Jerry Forrest deserved the win. Now, another fight that happened this past weekend happened yesterday. Jojo Diaz and Devin Haney. Listen, it was a, it was a fairly entertaining fight. I congratulate Devin Haney. He definitely deserved to win that fight. Uh, I scored Devin Haney winning eight or nine rounds of that fight. Jojo Diaz, he was there. He gave Devin Haney some problems. Maybe he won four rounds. Maybe he won five. Maybe. May I, I think Jojo Diaz won four rounds at the most, in my opinion. But my opinion was not really any different than any of the three judges at ringside. It was a unanimous decision. For Devin Haney. However, Rick Glazier, uh, Rick, Rick, Rick Glazier, boxing insider, uh, via his social media accounts, he expressed a thought that I, uh, I found to be true, and I found it to be a brutally honest truth that's really unavoidable. While Jojo Diaz lost the fight, I am, or, you know, 
I'd be more looking, I'm more looking forward to seeing Jojo Diaz in the ring next. Meaning that while Devin Haney won the fight, Jojo Diaz was the more exciting fighter and I would be, I'd be more entertained by a Jojo Diaz fight. I'm more looking forward to seeing Jojo Diaz fight next than I am to see Devin Haney fight next. And Rick Glazier expressed that same sentiment that, you know, Although Devin Haney won, he's looking forward to seeing Jojo Diaz next fight more. Take from that what you will. Devin Haney, excellent boxer. Uh, hopefully he goes on to the big fight with George Cambosis. Hopefully it takes place in Australia in a stadium for all the belts at 135 pounds. I would absolutely fucking love it. I would love to see that fight. But at the end of the day, I am definitely looking forward to Jojo Diaz next fight. He's an action fighter. He doesn't shy away from contact. He's all about the exchanges. And, you know, he's there to be hit and he throws a lot of punches. Very entertaining fighter. Another fight that happened yesterday happened over there in the United Kingdom. Uh, happened uh, on a Frank Warren card. And that was Anthony Yard and Lyndon Arthur in their rematch from a year ago. A year ago was a split decision. A controversial split decision win for Lyndon Arthur. Lyndon Arthur, who was almost stopped in the last round of that fight against Anthony Yard last year. The rematch this year uh, that took place on uh, Saturday, that took place yesterday. Anthony Yard beat the shit. He beat the shit out of Lyndon Arthur. Look, he stopped him in the fourth round. He knocked him out. Lyndon Arthur, you know, he was there. He didn't show up to lose. He... Came to win the fight, but Anthony Yard was too much for him. The body punching, the volume punching, his hooks inside. Anthony Yard's right hand was heavy, and Anthony Yard looked like the beast that he is. He he really looked spectacular, and I congratulate him in his knockout victory over Lyndon Arthur. And my only question for Anthony Yard is, what's next? I would love to see Anthony Yard face the winner of Callum... Uh, Callum Johnson, and Joe Smith Jr. I would love to see the winner of that fight face Anthony Yard. And being that Anthony Yard is the WBO international light heavyweight champion at 175 pounds by defeating Lyndon Arthur, he technically has lined himself up for a shot at the WBO championship currently held by Joe Smith Jr. That's a fight that I would love to see. I would love to see it over there in the United Kingdom. And that's a fight that's a pick em. I can't give you my pick on the winner today on that proposed fight. Joe Smith Jr. has a fight coming up against Callum Johnson in January. So before he can think about Anthony Yard, before I can think about Joe Smith Jr. versus Anthony Yard, Joe Smith Jr. has to get through his next fight. But Dreamers in Dreamland, everybody's favorite boxing shaman, yours truly the dream. It's been my pleasure. It's been your pleasure. It's been our pleasure. Let me tell you something. If you're a fan, fam, friend, foe, friend of me, you're a fucking asshole. I still got nothing but love for you. Peace.